This video will be about gout. Gout is when a chemical called uric acid forms crystals in the body. When the uric acid crystals form, white blood cells come to attack the crystals, resulting in symptoms. Let's cover those symptoms. Severe pain, redness, swelling, and warmth. Gout usually affects only one joint. The most common joint affected is the big toe. Fancy people call gout in the big toe podogra. Also, gout shows up in the arms and legs. Now for some vocabulary. When the patient has the symptoms of gout, the doctor says the patient is experiencing a flare. When the patient is not experiencing the symptoms, the doctor says the patient is in an intercritical period. Regarding the duration of flares, if untreated promptly, they can last two to three weeks. Regarding the duration of intercritical period, at first, they are usually a year long. 25% of the time, they can be up to three years long. And for 10% of patients, they can be up to 10 years long. With each flare, the intercritical period will shorten. For example, the intercritical period can shorten by two months after each flare to the point that they are occurring three times a year. Also, with time, the number of joints affected can increase. Lastly, after anywhere from 5 to 40 years, patients can have tophus formation. Tophus is a collection of uric acid outside the joint. Tophi are not painful as long as they don't damage the surrounding nerves. So, what causes gout? Let's discuss the risk factors. The number one risk factor is hyperuricemia which means a lot of uric acid in the blood. For any who are curious, here are the measurements. Now, you might be thinking what causes hyperuricemia. Put simply, hyperuricemia is a combination of adding too much uric acid to the blood and not removing enough. If you would like to learn more, please watch my video on hyperuricemia. One thing I forgot to cover in that video is that women have a lower risk than men. The reason is because estrogen increases the removal of uric acid via the kidneys. The next risk factor is poor blood circulation. I like to think of blood circulation similar to that of a cement truck in stirring your drink. If different fluids sit, they will eventually separate. These are the usual culprits of poor blood circulation. Now, let's discuss the medical tests. The best test is what's called an arthrocentesis. The idea is to collect fluid from the joint and look at it under a microscope. If there is gout, your doctor will see white blood cells and uric acid crystals. What's good about this test is that you can check for any bacteria. Just because you may have gout doesn't mean you can't have an infection as well. Now, you may wonder why your doctor does not measure the level of uric acid in your blood. The reason is that 25% of the time, during a flare, a patient can have a normal or even low uric acid level, and it is best to wait two weeks. Your doctor will still order blood tests because gout can increase your risk of kidney damage. Also, an ESR or CRP to measure immune system response. Unfortunately, not every doctor knows how to do an arthrocentesis. In this case, the doctor will order imaging. If the joint is in the hand or foot, your doctor will get a plain x-ray. An ultrasound is good if it isn't the patient's first flare. Unfortunately, ultrasound is not very good at finding the crystals. For this reason, your doctor might get an MRI. Lastly, DECT is an imaging that has debatable value. To keep this video short, I will discuss gout treatments in another video. Thank you for watching.